Now I'm going to show you how you actually program and or write the code for the part you're going to make. When you do your yo-yo, you're going to have a piece of graph paper that looks like this. And um, you're going to trace out maybe your initials or some design that you want to do. So here we have a um, someone's initials here, MD, and then all the coordinates written off to the side. You could write the coordinates right on the graph paper or off to the side, whatever you choose. But you have to have all the exact coordinates. So if we're going to do this, let me show you how you're going to set yours up. Um, in GNM code, you have uh, watching part two right now. I don't have it saved in here because I'm creating it. Uh, but then you'll click GNM Practice Absolute to use with this practice image. I'm going to choose GNM Practice to use the practice image. And this is a template that we can use. So instructions say go to file. We're going to make a copy of this. And we're going to name it. So make sure you name it, whatever your class period is. So I've named it according to the instructions. Uh, then make sure that you share it uh, with me right now. Uh, don't send me an email. And then open up that practice image. And again, if it doesn't work on this link, because it's been kind of finicky, you can go back to your school G and load it up. Um, but I'm going to give you an example using the um, using this part right here. So uh, we're going to travel through these coordinates. The first thing that we need to do is set up our code to work in absolute coordinates. So a block is always done as an N, and I'm just putting caps lock on. 0, 0. I'm going to start it out at 0, 0, and I'm going to count it by 2s because the next block has to be a larger number. That just tells it um, the order to run in. My G code for absolute coordinates, well, I don't remember any of those, so I'm going to go over to my reference sheet, and here it says absolute coordinates is G90. So then we go back to here, and I type in G90. So that sets that up. Now I need to make sure I'm in inch mode. So go back to reference. Inch mode is G20. G20 right here. And then last, make sure that your spindle speed is on. So I'm going to set my block, N04. And spindle is, turn spindle on is M03, M03. And then I need to set the speed to 3000. So you can have a couple um, options on one line. An M and an S generally are on the same line. So speed is S3000. And again, in the reference, frequently used characters, S is spindle speed. So let's go back. Now I want to rapid move the spindle to 0.1 above the part. So N06. And I'm going to rapid. So what is rapid move? Rapid traverse is G00. That means it won't run at any feed speed. It runs at the maximum speed the machine can run. You only want to do that when you're hovering the drill bit above the part. Never do that as you're milling because it can be too fast for the part. You can break the bit. So we're going to go to 0.1 above the part. So that would be the Z direction at Z 0.1. And now we're going to rapid make sure that we are over point A. I don't need to do G00 again because I've already done it. It remembers the last G. So we're going to wrap it above point A. Well, point A is coordinates 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So I'm going to wrap it G00 above X 0.5, Y 0.5. That rapids above that point. Next, I'm going to plunge into the part, and I'm going to plunge at a feed speed of 10. So that means I need to go a linear interpolation at a given feed rate. So anytime you go with the feed speed, it has to be G01. So we're going to set this to G01 and plunge it at negative 0.02. We're going two hundredths in. Uh, when you're engraving, um, I would actually suggest you go a little bit deeper when you engrave. So in this sample, we say 0.02. Um, I would suggest you go on my milling examples I showed all you. This was 0.04. It gives you a deeper line. It's more defined. It's kind of a nicer look. So um, I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to go 0.04 instead. And so we've plunged at a feed rate F10. And now we're going to go feed speed of 20. So we have an N12. I have a G01 because I have a feed speed. And we're going to go to the very first point. It says to the next point. And that actually should be 2B. All right, well, anyway. So where is point B? Point B is 0.5, 1.5. So now that I've done all the setup, I can actually code pretty quickly. Um, we're going to go x.5 and y1.5. And my next point is n14. And I'm going to go to point c. 
and point C, all of these are in a straight line, is 0.875 to point 0.1. So I've finished out the points. I've gone to point B, C, D, and E. So we have B, C, D, and E. But at this point, I can't go straight to H because I'll put a line there. So I have to go up, over, and then plunge back down before I go to F. So if I'm at E, I need to go up to Z.1 and then over to H. So um, you can see that the numbers didn't quite fit here. It was 875. It just kind of ran in the next line. Um, I don't have enough space here in my template, so I need to right click and insert a row below. And I'm going to have to do that a couple times. I put these comments down here below because that's how you're going to end every program. So let's go N20. I needed to raise up, so I'm going to go Z.1. And then that just, uh, I'm just going to say raises bit, raises the milling bit. Then N22, I'm going to move to, I believe it was point H. It is point H. And H is 1.75.5. So X 1.75, Y 0 0.5. And then I'm going to plunge in 24, and I'm going to plunge to Z negative 0 0.04. Plunge. But remember, when you plunge, you have to change your feed speed to 10 when you're plunging. So now we're plunged into H. We're going to move up to F, which is 1.751. And 26, 1.75, Y1. And I have to change my feed speed to 20 again. So that's um, moving to point F. And then the last one, it looks like I need to insert another row below, is N28. I need to do a circular. So I'm going clockwise to H from F. So I need clockwise code. Which one is clockwise? Clockwise is G02. So I go G02. And I go down um, from F down to H. From F to H. Well, the H coordinates is 1.75.5. And I noticed that uh, my F position, I actually use the I one. The F should be 1.5. You probably noticed that too. Um, and I'm going about the center. So this is where you use the I and J. So I'm going to go in a circle. Whoops. I'm going to go in a circle to this point from F to H, but I'm going to go around the center I. Well, the coordinates for I are 1.75 and 1. So I use I, 1.75, that represents your X, and J represents your Y, J1. So I'm going in a circle from this point to this point, from um, F back to clockwise to H, around point I. So clockwise to H around the center I. And at that point, I'm done. So then I need to raise the spindle 0.1. So I have an N30. And I raise it to 0.1. So that's a Z.1. Then I want to stop the spindle. And stopping the spindle, I don't remember that. So stop spindle, turn motor off is MO5. So I go, where's my M column? My M column is the third one from the end. So I do MO5. Then you want to return the arm to X2, Y2, Z2. Just get it up and out of the way. So I have an N34, and I'm going to say rapid, because I can do that quickly, because the spindle is off. I'm up above the part. So I can G00 rapid, X2, Y2, Z2. And then the last thing is an N36. I stop the program. So which one kills the program? M02. So M02. So this code right here, completely written out, would mill out this initial sequence. So that's exactly what you're going to need to do for the sample file that I've given you. It's quite a bit smaller. There's only three or four points. Um, and at the um, third video, I'm going to show you how you code in relative. Uh, should be quite a bit um, shorter video because there's just a few simple changes that you need to make. And I'm not going to take you all the way through it. Because once you get the idea, um, you'll be able to do it on your own.